Hi, I'm Scott Stein and congratulations. Maybe you just got an iPad. Is that why you're watching this video? In that case, what do you do to set it up? What happens next? Well, whether you got the large Retina Display iPad or the iPad Mini, the steps are the same because they've got the same operating system underneath. And here are the most important tips I found, the ones that I use when I set up an iPad to review or when I purchase one for the first time. Get to know iCloud is my number one, because iCloud is not just a way to back up stuff from your previous iPad if you've had one, but it also connects all of your iOS devices or even your Mac and brings your contacts, your photo stream if you have a photo shared, notes, bookmarks in Safari. And so it instantly makes your iPad feel like your own. Connect that iCloud account immediately and learn to power use it. And I recommend that you learn to back up in the cloud if you want to pay for those services. Alternatively, you could use Google. Google has a ton of apps available for the iPad and you could put your email, your calendar information, your docs and be able to live on the Google Cloud all the time on your iPad and really not have to use Apple's built-in suite of apps. Two, get your free stuff. There's a ton of free content you can get on your iPad depending on whether you have magazines, real magazines, newspapers, your, your cable TV account, all of these things have iPad apps in many cases that provide free content right off the bat for you and you can just enter your digital subscription information and boom you've got content to go. You may already be subscribing to Netflix, you may be subscribing to Hulu Plus or you may already have a bunch of iPhone games that already have iPad optimized versions. So check, look in your already downloaded apps um, that you can access via the App Store and take advantage. Three. Store your media on the cloud. I know cloud is a hot topic, but when it comes to the iPad, you really don't want to be syncing back in with your computer all the time. Although you can, it's going to get frustrating. For music, there are a variety of services. iTunes Match, Spotify is a great subscription service for streaming. You've also got Google Music and Amazon Cloud Music, both of which work with the iPad in some capacity. Take advantage, put all your music up there. For video, the same thing. You've got not only iTunes, but Amazon Instant Video, Netflix, a lot of different ways to rent and access videos. And for books, same thing, Amazon, The Nook, Google, and iBooks. Number four, get into your settings and add Facebook and Twitter. You can actually activate that now in iOS 6, and having that baked in is going to enable you to easily share photos that you've taken or other content web pages for instance without having to switch apps. It's very easy to use, it's very fun, though I'd recommend in Facebook turn off contacts and turn off calendar sharing with Facebook because it's suddenly going to spam you with all sorts of random invites and contact information that maybe you didn't necessarily want in your contacts. But you can turn it off and then deactivate that. Number five, tweak your orientation lock. This little switch on the side of the iPad it looks like the iPhones and it defaults to a silence mode which is not really useful on an iPad. Change it over in the settings to orientation lock, which means that when you activate it, it won't actually turn when you turn the iPad, which is great for reading if you're reading any books or magazines. See, otherwise it turns like this. Um, small tip, very helpful. Number six, make folders. It's a very simple thing in iOS 6. You can drag apps into shared folders. Um, they all gather together in one icon to use, and then you can pull them up in a snap. You should make these based on categories that you're going to use. Music, video, maybe kid apps. Um, things that you can get at a touch of a button. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than having to navigate through page after page of apps. And number seven, get a case. Get a bag. You know, this, iPads are beautiful, but they're a little bit delicate, and they're something that you don't want to scratch and dent. And when you get them out of the box, they don't come with anything. Now, uh, the smart covers are a really nice way to cover up the top, but they don't protect the back. I like to get a back cover as well, or you can go with slip cases. Also, a great direction to go is maybe some sort of iPad-friendly small bag that you can then put the iPad into. Um, check out another piece I wrote recently on what makes a good iPad case or iPad bag. We have a ton of those listed at CNET. That's really depending on your taste, but get something uh, as soon as you can if it's not already in your little holiday gift basket. I'm Scott Stein, and good luck with your iPad. Check back at CNET for a lot more tips.